Good morning, everyone. It's good to have you in on this beautiful day. I hope that, um, that, that you're uh, getting up on the right side of the bed. What's the right side of the bed? It's the side you're sleeping on. I don't know. Whichever side you wake up on. Anyhow, that's always, that's always one of those things. It's like, um, like one, of the, one of my pet peeves is um, you hear on the radio all the time, when, it's, when, when they're going, they're going. When the last one sold, it's sold. Well, that makes sense. Um, when it's over, it's over. Well, it's, it, it is over. Uh, you don't have to remind me of that, but that's little, little things there. If I don't get any, if I don't get any more involved in that, I'm, I'm in good shape. But um, praise the Lord. Um, we have some singing this morning. We have a message this morning coming up. Um, God's been good. I pray that that um, that you're well. And if you're not well, that you'll get you'll get better. We need to pray for the elections coming up. They're they're nationwide, or world, worldwide actually. And I pray that um, the right person wins, and that the right person is the one you vote for. Um, with that in mind, Debbie and Miss Debbie and Mr. Earl are going to come and sing for us. They have two beautiful songs this morning, and I want you to join in. 125. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. We can turn to 122, nothing but the blood, and if everybody would please stand. Intro in all verses. <clears throat> what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, blood of Jesus for my part in part in this I see nothing but the blood of Jesus for my cleansing this my plea nothing but the blood of Jesus oh the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing can for sin atone, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Not a good that I have done, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my hope and peace. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. used to it being such a slower version. The Beautiful song. The next one is 126. The blood, whoa. 
125. 125. Power in the blood. Intro in all verses, right? Yes. Now this one's fast. Would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood. Power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, there is, power, there is wonder working out in the blood. In the blood of the Lamb. Of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working out in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be free from the passion and pride? There's power in the blood. Power in the blood. Come for the cleansing to Calvary's tide. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, there is power, wonder working power in the blood. In the blood of the Lamb. Of the Lamb. There is power, there is power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be wider, much wider than snow? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Sin slain, sin lost in this life-giving flow. There's wonderful power in the blood. Amen. There is power, there is power, wonder-working power in the blood. In the blood of the Lamb. Of the Lamb. There is power, there is power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you do service for Jesus, your King? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily his praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, there is power, wonder-working power. In the blood, in the blood of the Lamb. Of the Lamb. There is power, there is power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. One more time. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood, in the blood of, the Lamb. of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Amen. We sing that at the mission. And then we have a guitar that goes bam, bam, bam. So <laughs> We like to keep it, it yep. peppy. Amen. Bev will come and present the message. The verses. Pastor has the message, right? Yes. Pastor John has the message. Good morning, everyone. I pray that you all have a blessed day today. The sun is shining and the birds are singing. But we're going to read the scripture for today, which comes from Isaiah chapter 44. Starting at verse 9. They shall make a graven image, or all of them vanity. And their delectable things shall not profit, and they are their own witnesses. They see not nor know that they may be ashamed. Who hath formed a God, or molten a graven image, that is profitable for nothing? Behold, all his fellows shall be ashamed. And the workmen, they are of men. Let them all be gathered together. Let them stand up, yet they shall fear, and they shall be ashamed together. The smith with the tongs both worketh in the coals, and fashioned it with hammers, and worketh it with the strength of his arms. Yea, he is hungry, and his strength faileth. He drinketh no water, and is faint. The carpenter stretcheth out his rule. He marketh it out with a line. He fitteth it with planes, and he marketh it out with the compass, and, mark, and maketh it after the figure of a man, according to the beauty of a man, and that it may remain in the house. And this is our text verse for today. Chapter, or verse 14. He heweth him down cedars. And taketh the cypress and the oak, which he strengtheneth for himself among the trees of the forest. He planteth an ash, and the rain doth nourish it. Then shall it be for a man to burn, that he shall take thereof and warm himself. 
Yea, he kindleth it and baketh bread. Yea, he maketh a god and worshipeth it. He maketh it in, to a graven image and falleth down thereto. He burneth part thereof in the fire, and with part thereof he eateth flesh. He roasteth roast and is satisfied. Yea, he warmeth himself and saith, Aha, I am warm, I have seen the fire. And the residue thereof he maketh a god, even his graven image. He falleth down unto it and worshipeth it, and prayeth unto it and saith, Deliver me, for thou art my god. May God bless the reading of his word. Thank you, Sister Bev. What a, what a crazy story here this is. Not a crazy story, it's the story of the, the builder. And uh, we're going we're to glean from it this morning. Um, the Lord's good. God's, God's good in spite of us. And uh, right, first things first, I'm serving notice on a little smutty, smutty face this morning. And um, uh, any Pharisee that might be listening, that, um, that there, there's still power in the blood. Praise God, the, the, it's blood plus nothing. Gets us to heaven, that's for sure. I'm, I'm saying, um, in thinking, about, uh, thinking about what Sister Bev read, um, it might be, it might seem, uh, might seem uh, foreign to you. Uh, let me like, let me explain a little bit. I brought it down to I brought it down to Pinesburg terms here this morning. Uh, I, I I believe we pretty much believe in the fact that we believe the virgin birth and they don't. The the cults, the the uh, the liberal churches, and there's liberal churches within within walking distance of here. Um, they, um, they 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 don't believe in the virgin birth the way we believe in the virgin birth. Take the virgin birth out of out of the the Christian science, uh, the Christian uh, religion, and it's just another religion. It's just uh, just another uh, another cult. Um, I'm saying, um, we pretty much take for granted that, that that we believe in the death, the death, the burial, and the resurrection, and they don't. Some people believe that Jesus never died, uh, and they can they can they can uh, try to make the scripture sound that way, but it's not going to be that way for sure. However, there's there's one there's one area where we're pretty much the same as the heathen. We're pretty much the same as the as the liberal this morning, and that's said. That's what I want. That's what I want to think about. That's what the, the scripture Sister Bev read was saying. The story is uh, let's 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 bring it down and say um, somebody's building a house. Uh, you uh, you uh, start with a foundation, put the foundation in, you go up from there. You get inside and you start cutting two by fours around windows and two by eights and two by twelves and different things for steps and stuff. And usually, usually, if you look around a new house, when when a new house is being built, there's a pile of wood somewhere, a scrap pile of wood, and um, that's what this is talking about. Is with all kind of with all kind of stuff in it, uh, nails and bolts and screws and wood and shingles and stuff. And they would uh, they would take the, the 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 workers would take the the good wood home. The ash and the oak and uh, the uh, or the the oak and the uh, maple and different things, the good wood they take home, and they burn for them to make heat to cook to cook biscuits. Man, there ain't nothing like homemade biscuits. Glory to God, I could eat a biscuit right now. Anybody have a biscuit? No. Nope. Judy was coming. I thought maybe she had a biscuit for me. Um, Ralph's not here. Yeah. Um, they 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 then would um, they, they they then would take the ashes. And they make themselves a god, and they give they give God the ashes that was left over from the wood pile. Started two before, and ended up a, a scrap of wood, and it ended up um, it ended up a um, a, uh, a, a in the ash heap, and then they take the ash heap and uh, and make it uh, something for the gods. And um, as we think about that, God is telling us this morning through our scripture, that's about what we're doing sometimes. It's about what we're doing sometimes. We um we we're, we're giving God what we have left over. We're giving God um, after we eat. We're giving God the, the, the scraps off the table. Um, we plan we plan everything around our needs. God, this is what I need. This is what I want. This is this, I'm working for it. After all, I'm I'm making the money in the house. I'm gonna I'm gonna provide what I want. And I'm gonna eat it first. I'm gonna get the best clothes. I don't want I don't want um, I don't want um, Kmart sneakers. Kmart didn't even. I, I understand there's still two two K-Bart stores in the world yet. They're about ready to close too. 
But I always liked Kmart. I like a blue light special. We used to go out and, and um, walk through the walk through the store waiting on a blue light special. And Ruth would say, there it is. She'd take off for it. And um, she'd go over and it wouldn't be anything we want. Well, let's get it. It's a blue light. We don't need it. It's a blue light special, though. I'd put my foot down. She'd come home with it. Um, you take the... Um, I wonder what what part of your life do you have you given to God? Hmm? What part of your life have you given to God? You take the hours of, of your life and the hours that you spend in a day's time. What part of that day have you given to God? Um, you realize at eleven thirty you haven't prayed yet today, and you go to bed. You go to bed and start praying, and you fall asleep. Nothing wrong with falling asleep as you pray. Unless that's the only time you prayed all day. Um, we um, we um, we watch the football games in prime time. That's what the message is this morning. Prime time. Um, we we choose what we want for you and me. We satisfy our needs first. And if, um, if, as long as our needs are satisfied, we're we're fine. Forget about you. That's not what God says. Um, we need to we need to be praying in prime time, not when not when not not giving God what's left over. Um, we say, um, I wonder how many I wonder how many uh, have read their Bible this week hmm? in prime time at all. We uh, we take it home, we throw it on the coffee table, and it lays there till next week. And um, you, uh, I, I, God sees us at night. Crawling in bed, haven't read our Bibles yet, and we, we, we it's like taking toothpicks and propping our eyelids open so we can see the Bible. Um, prime time. They didn't get they didn't give um they didn't give the poor the best. They didn't give the poor it's it's like um oh I don't like this shirt anymore, I think I'm gonna give it to the rescue mission. When did you go out and buy a new shirt and give it to the rescue mission? Um we have um we have anything that's left over. We'll give to the rescue mission. We'll give to Salvation Army. We'll give to to um, something, something, somewhere. Act two or whatever it is. I'm saying God should get the best of what we got, not the leftovers. Um, God should get the prime years of our lives, not the, not the leftovers. God bless. God blesses us when when we give Him the prime times. The Bible still says, "Seek ye second the kingdom of God." No, it doesn't. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. What 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 good would we do to ourselves if we if we sought God first in everything? If we put put God first in, in, on top of everything instead of, instead of uh, exhausting everything and then going to God, we use God as a fire escape sometimes. God must God must be sick to his stomach the way we act sometimes the way we the way we live our lives. I don't understand why he lets us here. I'm glad he does. It seems to me that if we believe, listen to me now. It seems to me that if we believe. The God, the living God, the God that wrote the book, we would tell more folks about it. If I had the cure for cancer, I, I almost believe the cure for cancer is out there too. If I had the cure for cancer, and I kept it to myself, I wouldn't be much of a friend to you. Um, I got this I got this little bottle here, you drink that, and you're, you're done with cancer. But I'm not going to give it to you, it's mine. That's the way we treat God. God, you give me 24 hours in a day. If there's any time of that 24 hours left over at night, it might only be, it might only be a minute, maybe 10, 15. If there's any time left over, I'm going to give you that time. Um, God pity our souls. God pity our souls. Um, it seems to me like, um, it seems to me that if we believe that the, that the God of the world, or the God of the, 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 that we serve, wrote the book, we ought to spend more time in the book. We all we all love the book. Um, question: When was the last time you When was the last time you give food to the poor? We clean our cupboards out. We uh, we go. Uh, well, I have these uh, have these hot dogs and peas here. You give hot dogs and peas to someone, y'all be locked up. That's what my Bible says. Um, nobody nobody to write my anybody anybody else don't like hot dogs and peas. You like peas? Oh, there's something wrong with you. Come to my office after a while, we'll examine things. Um, cause my Bible says you can't you can't love hot dogs, and I I I ate a hot dog this week with sauerkraut on. 
If you if you put enough if you put enough condiments on it, I can eat a hot dog as long as you can't see it. You put you put uh, you put onions and chili and cauliflower or not cauliflower. Um, you can put cauliflower on it too. Uh, hot dogs and and peas. What a shame! What a shame! I'm going to ask God why why he wasted his time making them things. But um, by the way, by the way, um, God wants us to. God will not be a part-time God. He will not be a part-time. He's going to get what he's going to get what belongs to him. It might be that it might be that flat tire you get going down the road. It might be that that cough you get that 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 uh, sore throat you get. God's going to God's going to get part of you, whatever whatever it takes, whatever it takes. God will get God will get what belongs to him for sure. Uh, something else I found out this week: West Virginia is a state now, brother. I didn't know that. It's a state. I I I I, I thought it was something else. I I thought it was a I thought it was a, an island. What you don't what you don't learn when you're when you're reading. I guess what I'm thinking about this morning is, what part of your life have you really given to Christ? Have you really turned it over to God? We walked down, got saved. We tell people we're born again. We tell people we're Christian. We tell people we're ready to go to heaven. And that's good. All that's fine. That's, that's all necessary. But what have, you, what have you done for Christ lately? Preacher, how, how, do you, um, how do you measure a Christian's life? I tell you how God measures a Christian's life. God measures a Christian's life on, a Christian's life on not what we've done since we've been saved, but how much we've done lately. How much have you done lately for God? I got saved 50 years ago. I, that, that's good. I'm glad you did. You, you, you were ready for, hell, ready for heaven 50 years ago. But how much have you done for Christ lately? Well, I'm getting older. I can't do what I used to do. I didn't. He didn't ask us that. How? What have you done lately? Uh, if there's a ladder, if there's a ladder sitting here. Here's the top rung. Here's the bottom rung. And um, uh, God's saying, um, there's people that are on the top rung that haven't done nearly what the people on the bottom rung are doing. You've you've graduated. Your uh, you got a Sunday school pen that that rubs the floor. You've been in Sunday school every year for every every week for 50 years. That's good, but have you have you talked to anybody about Christ? That's why we're here. We're not really here to invite people to church. We're supposed to fill the church. We're not really here to, to make God look good because we can't make we can't we can't make God look good. We're not here because of our beauty, because we're not beautiful. We're not here because of our strength, because um, our strength is is very much. We're here to, to glorify God. Glorify God means to spread His word. Um, God's um, God's a powerful God. God's a powerful good God. Um, I'll finish with this. I got three finishes this morning, sisters. So don't don't, don't go wacky here. Um, he was twenty-one. Well, let me let me let me back up a little bit. She was 22. He was 21. They um. They came on our bus and I led I led them to the Lord when they were five and six years old. We used to pull up in front of their house and they weren't ready. Mother would yell out the would yell out the door, "Come on in, get them ready." We were there to pick them up, take them to church. We had to go in and get them dressed. We go in and dress them up, give them a, give them a pop tart. And uh, throw them out, take them out, and throw them on the bus. And um, down the street was another little kid. That was a, that was two 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 uh, two girls twins. And uh, down the street was a was a guy that that they that, that both of them loved. They were five years old. They were in love. They were gonna get married. And um, they um, they come and they we wouldn't let them sit together, boy and girl. We wouldn't let boys boys and girls sit together on the bus. But uh, every time I'd look down, they'd, they'd, they'd come a seat closer. And they'd get a seat closer. And he'd move over and she'd move over. Get back over there where you belong. And um, they, were, they were honorary kids. They were good kids, though. You were honorary kids whenever you were young, I can tell. Um, they came for every service. Every service for 10 years. They came to me one day and Pastor John, guess what? 
I want to marry Gina. That was the opposite of the one that wanted to marry him at five years old. So they came and they they came and started counseling. They were they were twenty some years old now. He, he, she was twenty two and she he was twenty one. And um, he sat in the office and I said, uh, "Fellas, your guy, guys and gals, you're missing church. You haven't been in church now for about five weeks." I said, "Pastor, we, I know I know you were going to say that. I knew you were going to bring up something. We've been so busy planning the wedding. We've been so busy making out." invitations and doing things. We just haven't had time for God these last couple of weeks. We still pray. We still we still read our Bible and stuff, but we haven't had time to, to be in church. And I admonished him to be in church. I said, listen, you got, you got to be in church. You're not strong enough to be out of church. By the way, you're not strong enough to be out of church either. We think we can make it. We think we're, we think we're tough until the devil pops out his chest and shows us, shows us what tough is. I guarantee you the devil's just waiting for you to slip a little bit. And it takes one little slip, and he's got you. He's got you. Um, so they uh, they said, okay, pre- preacher, we'll, pastor, we'll, we'll be in church tomorrow. Tomorrow came, and they, they missed church. Friday night of that week was the, um, was the um, well, what do you call it when you rehearse? Oh, it was the rehearsal. Yeah, that's what I was going to call it. They, uh, they came, and they, they, we went through the rehearsal. And I hate wedding rehearsals. I, I, I like to do funerals. Um, especially of saved people, wedding rehearsals, wedding rehearsals, and weddings are just tough. Because uh, Maybell, Maybell has her way of wanting to do it. Mom, mom, mom shoots in, wants to do it this way. Grandma wants to do it this way. Well, that's not how we did back in the old days. And um, so it's it's tough. They, the rehearsal was done. They were going to the chicken place. It's what was called the chicken place for for uh, rehearsal dinner. And on the way to the chicken place. Um, Gina and Billy were in an accident. I could see the. I was the last one to leave the last one to leave the church, headed for the chicken place. I could see in front of me all all kind of all kind of lights flashing, just just terrible scene. And you get that you get that sunken feeling right away, because you know everybody was at the church was going that way. And um, I got as close as I could get. And I walked up to the to the one trooper that was standing on the scene. I said, "What what's going on? What happened?" I said two young people were just were just uh, in in a terrible accident. They hit a they hit a mailbox. They hit a tree, and they hit a they hit a station wagon coming the other way. I said, "Are they okay?" He said, "No, they're not. Gonna, I don't think either one of them are going to make it." Do you mind if I walk up? They might be from our from our wedding thing. He said. He said, "Yes, you you can walk up." I, I about half knew the the trooper from before. He said, "Just don't, just don't get in anybody's way, and don't, don't be careful what you're doing." So I walked up, and it was Tina and Billy. Buddha sprawled over the seat. I took his hand. I said, "Billy, the paramedic out here says you're not going to make it. Are you sure that you're ready to go to heaven?" I said, "Yeah, Pastor John, I'm sure." And as I held his hand, he passed through this life into the next. Gina was laying in the seat beside him. I said, Gina, are you sure you're ready to go to heaven? She said, yes, I'm, I'm sure I'm going to heaven, but I'm, I'm going to make it out of here okay. I know I am. Billy's going to make it out too. They cut her out of the car, took her to the hospital. And she, she lived She lived in the... In the um, in grave condition in, 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 in the intensive care unit for three days. I went in to see her the next day, and they said they moved her. They moved her to the uh, to the uh, progressive care. Progressive care is a little is the next step below the intensive care. It's a little bit better. I said, you mean she's getting better? Well, I, I can't say she's getting better. She just didn't need, need the care that we give her in intensive care. I went in to see her. She said, um, she said, hi, Pastor John. She said, I'm sorry. What are you sorry for, Gina? She said, I'm sorry I missed church. I promised you I was going to be in church. And I'm sorry I wasn't there. She said, uh, as soon as I talk to Billy, we're going to be there the next Sunday we're able to go. She said, um, I think we're going to have to postpone the wedding a little bit. We well, were supposed to be the next day. 
I said, yeah, we're going to have to postpone it a little bit. Um, I just left her, left her like that. I prayed for her, and she was, she was in and out of consciousness. Went out and talked to the, talked to the nurse outside, and she, the nurse said, she's, I think she's going to make it. Her, her vital signs are getting better. She's got some brain issues. She's got some issues with her legs and her back. But I think she's going to make it. Mom came in and said, Preacher, I can't, I can't tell her that Billy's dead. Can you tell her? I said, yeah, I can tell her. One of the hardest things I do, one of the hardest things I've ever done was tell her that her, that her husband to be is gone. She said, she said, um, I need to talk to Billy. I said, can you, can you, can you, um, the, the, the people think that the preachers can get in the hospital and pull, it, pull strings and get anybody to do anything. And they'll do a lot for you if you just act like you know what you're doing. And I said, um, I said, uh, Gina, I want you to know that Billy didn't make it through the accident. She got tears as big as as big as watermelons started to come out of her eyes. I said, Billy's 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 already graduated to heaven. He she said, How do you know that? I said, I talked to him. I was I was holding his hand when he when he when he left the eight, when he left the world. She said, um, she said well, I, I don't I don't want to live either. I don't want to live either. I said, I said, um, Gina, you need you need to live. You need you need to go on and make it. She said, I don't think I can. I said, Yes, you can. You can you can do it. You can do it, Tina. Gina, Gina you can do it. She she lived her, for four months in the hospital. They finally discharged her to, to home with help. I go to the home every other day. And she said, um, she said, Pastor John, I don't think I'm going to make it. So my heart's just broken. I said, everybody's heart's broken, Gina. We're glad you're here, though. She said, I don't want to be here, preacher. I don't want to be here. I want to be in heaven with Billy. I said, I understand that, but, but God wants you here for some reason. He didn't take you, too. That was um, October, what's today? October 25th. That was October the 23rd. Every every October twenty third at ten thirty at night, she calls me on the phone. This this past week, she called me on the phone. She said, "Preacher, you don't know who this is, do you?" I said, "Yes, yeah, Gina." She, uh, she said, "How you doing?" She said, "I think I'm gonna make it, preacher. I think I'm gonna make it." Um, it's hard though. I said, yeah, Gina, it's going to be hard too. I said, but you need to put your trust in the Lord. I said, Billy's in a place where we desire to be, and we don't, he, we, we, he, he wouldn't come back if he had a choice. He would not come back because it's such a beautiful place. She said, um, she said is there anything I can do for you? I said, yeah, you can, you can pray every day. I said, never underestimate the power of prayer. I admonish you this morning, every one of us here, to never underestimate the power of prayer. She said, Pastor John, the reason I asked you if I could do anything for you because now I have plenty of time to do something. I told you, I told you the night at, at the, in, the, in the office that I didn't have time for God. Now I got time for God. What a sad way to have time for God. One of the saddest pictures I have in my office is a little boy that drowned in their backyard or in the neighbor's backyard. His daddy didn't have time for God either. He begged he begged to, he begged his daddy to come to church. Daddy, please come to church. Please, 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 please come to church. Ride the bus. Daddy said, no, I got I to work, son. Can't, can't come. The boy drowned in a pond in the backyard. And the saddest, saddest picture I have, I've ever seen, 
is at the funeral home. That, that, that dad reached down into the casket and pulled his little boy out of his casket and held him there in his arms. He said, God, now I have plenty of time to do what I need to do. God's going to get the prime time out of your life one way or the other. Um, we give God the leftovers. We pay all of our bills. If we have any left over, we give it to the church. We we eat our filet mignon and we eat our uh, we are we eat our best spaghetti and and uh, meat sauce. If there's any left over, we'll give it to Debbie and take it to the mission. We ought to give our best to God. I wonder, have I done my best for Jesus? For He has done it all for me. Have you done your best for Jesus? Or are you sitting doing nothing? God wants us to be busy for Him. If we had any idea how close it was to Him coming back, we, we wouldn't we wouldn't do what we do most of the time. We wouldn't we wouldn't give God what 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 the leftover time. We give Him the prime time. We sit down and watch prime time television because they put the best shows on at prime time, the ones they want to succeed. succeed to succeed the most. The ones that get the highest ratings are on 9, 10 o'clock at night. Yet we yet we go to bed and haven't prayed all day. We go to bed and haven't have read our Bible all day. We go we go to bed every night and we haven't we haven't talked talk to Jesus about anybody. Talk to anybody about Jesus. When was the last time you eyeball to eyeball? I'm not saying I'm not saying left left a note on somebody's doorstep. When was the last time you eyeball to eyeball asked somebody if they if they were saved they were going to heaven? We're failing, folks. We're failing. People are dying and going to hell, and they don't they don't have to. They don't have to. We need to be busy for Christ. You say, well, preacher, I can't hardly go. I can't hardly walk. I can't hardly do anything. There's something that, there's something that you can do. Something that you can do. You can't do anything else. You can pray. You can pray for somebody that is doing something. God give us God give us a church full of people that'll 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 be busy that'll be busy and active for God. We need we need to stay on fire for God. We'll sit down this afternoon, folks. We'll sit down. I don't know if your favorite football team is playing or not. Best football team been playing until tomorrow night. But um, uh, if your favorite team is playing this afternoon, we'll sit down. Watch we'll watch the whole game. Sit there for three hours, watch the whole game. We can't, we can't, uh, we can't spend five minutes in prayer. Let me tell you, it's tough. It's tough to pray for ten minutes solid, fifteen minutes solid. But we need to do it. We need to do it. If God comes back today, and I'm finished with this, if God comes back today, are you ready to serve Him? Are you ready for Him? Or is, is, is he going to take you along? Is he, going to, is he going to catch you up? I hope so. Because when he comes back, when we meet him in the air, it's going to be worth it. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. The trials that we have on earth, the pains that we have on earth, are going to seem so small when we see him. One glimpse at his dear face, all shadows, all sorrows will erase. So, swiftly run the race till we see him. We can have that joy of Jesus in our heart if we want to. Have you accepted Christ as your Savior? Have you? If not, do it now. Just something simple like, I've, Dear Lord Jesus, I know I've sinned. Come into my heart and forgive me of my sins. That's all it takes. That's all it takes. Jesus said, um, we're going to have to postpone the wedding for a little bit. I said, no, Gina, we're going to have to postpone it all together. I said, now you got to you got to be the bride ready for the, for the, for the, uh, Christ, for Christ to come back and gather you up. He said, I'm ready. I'm ready. I want you to leave here this morning with joy in your heart because you have Jesus in your life. If you have Jesus in your life, I want you to be serving God. There's something around the church here that you can do. I guarantee you, there's something. There's something that you can do. Somebody that you can visit. You probably have. You, have you visited your neighbor? 
the guy up the street, the guy down the road, the guy, the guy throws the beer cans in the yard. Have you, have you, have you talked to him? Um, the guy with the with the dog who barks all night. Have you talked to him? We need to. We have to. To be right with God. Do you have any father? I pray that you be with us in a special way. I realize that these, not one of these people in here this morning needed, needed to hear what I had to say. But we all need to hear what you said through me this morning. I pray that you would, you would cause us to give you the prime times of our lives, not just leftover time. I don't know how many times I've been out on visitation. And people said, well, preacher, I'm afraid if, if I come in the roof, we fall in the church. No, just, just come. We'll, 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 we'll put up with the roof falling in. We'll set in the, we'll set in the cold. Um, make up all kinds of excuses why we can't serve God, why we can't do this. We're busy. What if God takes the, the thing away that, that makes you so busy? Gina pleaded, Gina pleaded for Billy. Please come back. Please come back. That father with his draped with the draped body of his son in his arms just cried and cried and cried. He said, if only I was taking the time. I spent more time with my son. May not change things. Might have though. Might have. I pray that, Father, that you would touch us each one. We leave this place saved, ready for heaven. And if we're saved, ready for heaven, that we'd be, be getting other people ready for heaven. That's that's the reason we're here. Father, go with us in all we do. Make make us make us cherish our decisions because we've each made a decision already. If you're here without Christ, come right now. Maybe you need to come to the, come to the altar, come to the front, and get down and pray for somebody. Pray for you. Pray for a decision you have to make. Pray for something that's going on. We don't have to know what it is. God, God does. God does. Father, still us in a special way now. Cause us to live with our decisions this week. Make us a special people for you. Lord, we thank you for watching over us, for putting us in charge of many things for you. Pray you be with this local church and churches like it across the country. That, um, that are trying to trying to keep keep afloat for Christ, we would do that. You'd bring the right people in. That you'd bring the right people in to to, to uh, serve God, to be what God wants us to be. And we thank you, Lord, for all that you do, all that you've done, all that you'll do, well, all that you promised us in the future. Father, go with us as as we travel across our highways and byways of life. Bring us back again. I pray for our greet and treat tomorrow night that many people would show up and that um, the Lord will be blessed even through it. Watch over us now is our prayer and our plea, and we'll thank you in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Thank you for your decisions this morning. Thanks for being here. I pray it's been a good day for you, even though we started, we started on, a, on a little bit of a rocky note here this morning, but uh, we, we ended up okay. And um, with you here, your smiling face, all of you are smiling. Uh, I have the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart, down in my heart, I have the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart to stay, there is a joy of serving Jesus as I walk along life's way. You know that joy that, that Jesus wants in your heart? Go with it this morning. Um, do the opposite of bad, good. Do the opposite, don't do the opposite of good, something dumb. Don't do anything dumb. Um, reach out and touch somebody. So always somebody has a little bit worse than you do, and uh, they're 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 there they're they're there by the multitudes. Touch them this morning, give them a, give them a big old hug. Make sure you don't don't go down to the corner and hug the cop or anything like that now, but uh, give somebody a big old hug, and uh, you'll be you'll be you'll be blessed and he'll be blessed. God bless you. Thank you so much for being here, for watching over us, and and God bless you. You are dismissed. <laughs>